Greetings, fellow citizens. I am the Senate Dude, and welcome back to Hogwarts Legacy. When we last left off, we did a bunch of questing and Merlin trials, and, uh... Oh, I got money. Um... Well, I, I got money now. I didn't get it back then. But, uh... When we also freed a dragon... That, uh, was trapped in this small-ass tent. That tent that led to a big-ass location. There. Let's get High Wing out. Fly! Fly! High wing! Go! So, what we're going to do is... What are we going to do? Let me see. The Man Behind the Moons and Professor Weasley's assignment. So that's apparently the only assignment that we have right now. Alright, let's see. Oh, there's an ancient magic hotspot right there, so let's go down there and get it. Oh, how do I get off again? Land! Alright. Oh, hey! Fucking giant purple toad. Abandoned long ago, no doubt. Alright. Investigate! Incendio! Nope. Oh, that's locked. Oh, hello. Whoa! Revelio. All right. Uh. Oh. What the hell? Oh. Man, got some money. Revelio. Revelio. My mother would like to speak with me. I believe she has learned about some of what we've been up to. I'm hoping she may be easier on me if you are there. All right. Can we meet at the Three Broomsticks? It may finally be safe since we rescued the dragon from Horntail Hall. If only Professor Fig could have seen that. Hey! Alright. Got some money. Alright, let's see. Now that we've done that, Jackdaw's tomb. And. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Alright, 
let's just uh, head back to Hogwarts. And we'll do the Transfiguration shit. Uh, I went to Hogsmeade. There we go. Alright, let's... Uh, Let's go. <laughs> Gray lady, gentle sobbing, huh? Mm There's a mirror right here. That book Professor Weasley asked me to find should be around here somewhere. Oh, hello. Revelio. Looking for the book Intermediate Transfiguration. Yes. Professor Weasley asked me to, uh, get something from that book. May I have it? Did she now? I'll give you this book if you humor me by answering a few questions from my quiz. Quiz? Some people call bits of knowledge trivia. I would argue that no knowledge is trivial. Hence, I have created a small quiz, just for fun, focusing mainly on the lore of the Wizarding World. None of the other students will try it, no matter how many times I ask. They all say they have enough with schoolwork. Ugh, they don't value knowledge the way I do. Surely you're interested. I'll even start you off with a few of my easiest questions. Okay, sure. A quiz sounds like fun. Splendid! Just a few questions, and then I'll hand over this book. Let us begin. Before the invention of the Golden Snitch, which magical creature was used in a game of Quidditch? Oh, gosh. I actually don't know this. The Golden Snuggery, the Golden Snidget, or the Snake Bird? The Snake Bird. No. Incorrect. The answer was the Golden Snidget. The Snidget was first introduced to Quidditch in 1269 by a wizard named Barbarous Bragg. Sadly, they're thought to be extinct. Next question! Which potion is commonly referred to as liquid luck? What? I'm gonna go with that one. The Alihotsi draft. I'm afraid the answer was Felix Felicis. Since it makes the drinker temporarily lucky, Felix Felicis is a banned substance in all organized competitions. The tale of the three brothers involves which magical artifacts? Oh, I know this one. The Deathly Hallows. The Deathly Hallows. Correct. According to Beedle the Bard, the Deathly Hallows consists of the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Cloak of Invisibility. Which ball in Quidditch is the largest? I would have to say the bludger. The bludger. I'm sorry, but the correct answer was the quaffle. When a chaser throws the quaffle through one of three hoops in a Quidditch match, their team is awarded 10 points. True or false, Polyjuice Potion allows the drinker to change species. Well, Hermione became a cat, so... True. Actually, what? the answer was false. That's bullshit! While Polyjuice Potion can be used to change things such as age or race, it cannot be used to change species. Well, I suppose this has gone on long enough. I'll put the book back on the pedestal now. If you're inclined to test your knowledge again, I have plenty more questions I could ask you. And I won't be giving you any more easy questions either. The next ones will be more difficult. Sure. I'd like to answer more questions. What governmental body directly preceded the Ministry of Magic? Oh, I don't fucking know. Uh... The 
The Order of Merlin, I don't know. The Order of Merlin. No, that's incorrect. I fucking know. The knew answer it. was the Wizards Council. The Wizards Council disbanded in 1707 after the creation of the International Statute of Wizarding Secrecy, which required a more structured government to support its enforcement. Which dragon breed is the smallest? Uh, well, if this one has the size of an opal, then... The Antipodean opali. No, I'm sorry, oh, well. but the answer was the Peruvian Viper Tooth. Though the Viper Tooth is the smallest breed, averaging at around 15 feet in length, it is also the fastest breed and feared for its venomous fangs. Who founded the village of Hogsmeade? Oh, 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 oh. Quincy Hog. That can't be right. Alfreda Clagg. No, the answer was Hengist of Woodcroft. Ow! It is believed that Hengist used the Three Broomsticks Inn as his home. The hide behind was accidentally created by crossbreeding a ghoul with what other magical creature? A... What? A demiguise isn't even a creature. Alright, uh... A rune spore. That's incorrect. The answer really? They're was creatures? a while the hide behind has the power of invisibility, those who have seen it have described it as a tall, thin monkey with silver hair. What is the only spell known to repel a lethefold? A lethefold? The knockback jinx, the stunning spell of the Patronus charm. Expecto Patronum! The Patronus charm. Well done. Oh, I got it. The only known survivor of a Lethifold attack was a wizard named Flavius Belby, who was on holiday in Papua New Guinea at the time. Who published the law of elemental transfiguration? Gamp, Evangeline Orpington, or Laverne de Montmorency? Let's do that. Laverne de Montmorency. That's incorrect. The answer I was looking for was Gamp. One of the principal exceptions to Gamp's law is that food cannot be conjured, though it can be summoned. What does the Hogwarts motto translate to? Never tickle a sleeping dragon, that one I know. Never tickle a sleeping dragon. Correct! In Latin, the Hogwarts motto is Draco Dormians Nunquam Titillandus. Which magical creature is the only one known to produce eggs through its mouth? What? Basilisk, the Ashwinder, or the Rune Spore? The Ashwinder. The Ashwinder. That's incorrect. The really? correct answer was the Rune Spore. Oh, According well. to Parcel Mouths, each of the Rune Spore's three heads serves a different function. The left head is the Planner, the middle is the Dreamer, and the right is the Critic. Where is Ilvermorny School of Witchcraft and Wizardry located? Mount. Where the fuck is this shit? Ilvermorny? There. The Pyrenees. No, Ilvermorny is actually located on Mount Greylock. The American school was founded in the 17th century by Esalt Sayre and James Stewart. What is the most powerful love potion known to wizard kind? Uh, elixir to induce euphoria. <laughs> I'll agree. Elixir to induce euphoria. Incorrect. The answer was Amatentia. Amatentia smells differently to every person according to what they find attractive, such as dusty book covers or... <clears throat> Are you interested in continuing on to the next round? They're my most difficult questions. Let's do it. <laughs> Give me your worst. Wonderful. I do admire your thirst for knowledge. Emmerich the Evil was killed in a duel against whom? Uh... Dude, I like Egbert. Egbert the Egregious. That's right. Huh. Emmerich gained notoriety for terrorizing villages in the south of England during the Middle Ages when he was the master of the Elder Wand. If a chaser keeps their hand on the quaffle as it goes through the goal, what foul are they committing? Blatching, haversacking, or stooging? I'm gonna go with stooging because it's the three stooges. Stooging. The answer was actually haversacking. Blatching is flying to intentionally collide with a player. Stooging is when two chasers knock the other team's keeper away from the goals so that a third chaser can score. A bite from a mackled malaclaw has the unusual side effect of causing what? 
Hairy ears, bad luck, or webbed feet? Uh... Webbed feet. Webbed feet. No, the answer uh... was bad luck. Native to the European coastline, the effects of a Malaclaw's bite can last up to a week. What plant excretes stink sap? What the fuck is stink sap? Uh, Mimbletonia. Mimbleus Mimbletonia. Correct! The Mimbleus Mimbletonia plant secretes stink sap as a defensive mechanism when touched. The Pepper Up potion evolved from a remedy created by which 12th century wizard? Bowman Wright, Basil Flack, or Linfried of Stinch. St dude, Stinchcomb. Linfred of Stinchcomb. Very good. Ah. Centuries later, Glover Hipworth would expand on Linfred's previous work to create the Pepper Up potion we know today. In The Wizard and the Hopping Pot, what does the elder wizard leave for his son in the hopping pot? A single slipper, his wand, a smaller pot. A single slipper. A single slipper. That's correct. The story was created by Beedle the Bard, but there are a few versions. I won't spoil what the slipper was for if you haven't read it recently. The Snallygaster is native to which region of the world? <sighs> I want to say West Virginia. <laughs> ah, North America. North America. That's right. Huh. The part bird, part reptile, is a distant relative of the Okami and has serrated fangs and a bulletproof hide. Who is the Muggle Knight featured in the Fountain of Fair Fortune? Sir Amst, Sir Luckless, or Sir Lancelot? Well, since this is the only one I know. Sir Lancelot. No, uh, the answer well. was Sir Luckless. The three witches in the story are named Asher, Althida, and Amata. Oh, I adore a story that ends with a twist. The world's largest kelpie is also known by what other name? Uh, Pantagruel the Loch Ness Monster. The Loch Ness Monster. Correct. The Office of Misinformation has worked diligently to discredit any muggle evidence of the kelpie's existence. Who was the first minister for magic? I don't fucking know. Cadmus Peverell? Uh, I'll do Gamp again. That's his first name. Ulick Gamp. Yes. Gamp's greatest legacy was the founding of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. It outlawed the unforgivable curses. You've answered all of my questions. Ah, oh, it's nice to know there's another student who appreciates the value of knowledge. You might not have got very many right, but I'm sure you learned something regardless. Thank you for humoring me by participating. I had a splendid time. Thanks. I put the book back on the pedestal for you. Revelio ought to make quick work of this. Revelio. Book on Intermediate Transfiguration. This book is designed to help guide the student who wishes to pursue more complicated types of transfiguration. Professor Weasley often recommends it to her advanced students as a bit of light reading. Professor Weasley's tasks are complete. I should attend Transfiguration. Oh, hey, over here. Oh, and Lumos. Lumos! Oh, I know where that is. Right over here. See the guy right there. Give me a little fuck. Nope, oh, over here. I was about to say, what just happened? Hey! Okay, now what? Revelio! Why can't I jump down there? Oh, what? It was a big fucking, fucking invisible wall. Uncle Roland sends his best. He often asks after you and his owls. Hello. Hello, Adelaide. How are you and your uncle doing? Very well, thanks to you. The more I learn about Ranrock's foul lot, the more astounded I am that my uncle survived. I looked back over his old owls and noticed that they included pertinent details about his rare metal deposits. 
I believe that Ranrock's fiends were after those deposits and that they needed my uncle's knowledge. He was willingly going to rot away in that cell to keep me safe. Anything more to those owls? Any other pertinent details about those owls? Plenty. Uncle Roland couldn't be certain, but he thought he overheard goblins talking about infusing something into goblin silver. He wasn't sure what they meant, but something about the way they spoke of it made his skin crawl. Ugh, it's clear you saved my uncle from a very bad lot. Okay. Hey, glad to have helped. It was nothing at all, Adelaide. I'm just glad your uncle's safe. So am I. Seeing him again was such a relief. I told him that he must remain vigilant from now on. I, for one, can't help but look over my shoulder now whenever I leave the castle grounds. All right. Rebellion. <gasps> kitty! It's been a while since I pet a kitty in this game. Oh, your kitty. Oh. Oh. They have such deep meows. Oh. What the hell are you doing, boss? Okay, never mind. Hey, we're here. Let's go attend class. Transfiguration, as you may be weary of hearing me say, is an exact science that can take a lifetime to master. But we needn't be daunted. Almost anything can be transformed if you can just perceive the potential within it. As I see in all of you, tremendous witches and wizards, every one of you. Or it could just be my eyesight. Now, you all know what to do. Transformation. Hey! Beautifully done. Class is dismissed. Hey, I got an achievement. Now Learn all spells. Now is not the time to ease off your studying. OWLs will be here before you know it. All right, let's talk to the professor. You wanted to discuss my progress so far this term, Professor. I did. You seem to have had no trouble in getting up to speed, and frankly, excelling in your schoolwork this year. Hey, they helped. Thank you, Professor. The extra assignments have been helpful. As I suspected they would be. Now, it seems you've been making good use of the opportunities presented by your field guide. Of course, the guide isn't the only measure of success. I've heard that you can brew an impressive Edurus potion. Hopefully, you won't need it anytime soon, but it is a valuable potion to have when it is needed. Thank you, Professor. I will say I'm especially impressed with all you've accomplished in light of the rumors of your extracurricular activities. Was your extended conversation with Mr. Ollivander after you'd obtained your wand, or subsequent search of the Owlery, connected in any way to Professor Fig? 
Uh, yeah. Professor Fig has encouraged me to explore when I can in uh, an effort to complete my field guide. I see. I admire your penchant for learning, but do remember that your classwork and field guide are designed to educate you thoroughly. It'll be the end of the year in no time, and you'll want to be well prepared for your OWLs. I'll provide a final assessment at that time to ensure that you're ready for your exams. Until then, well done. You are dismissed. If you wish to practice the spell you just learned, the training dummy is available. Wait, where's the... oh. Oh wait, fuck. Uh, yoink. Glad to see you were paying close attention to my demonstration of the transformation spell. Something dawned on me about the triptych. Meet me at the Overlook, just north of the Forbidden Forest, and I'll explain. My plan with the helmet failed, but I have another idea. I think we may be able to find what we need at a goblin mine south of Hogwarts. Meet me there, and bring someone who speaks gobbledygook. Gobbledygook. I remember our meet mentioning something about gobbledygook. Alright. So what do I want to do? There's so many things we could do right now. Okay. Alright. Mum's the word. The dragon debrief. Man behind the moon. Just, uh... Let's, let's go find Natty. Professor Weasley transfigured the book with all her test answers into an owl to stop students. She has So frustrating. Quest, begin. You wanted to speak with me, Mother? I had hoped to speak with you alone, Natsai. Your message mentioned your concern about an unusual creature that was spotted in the woods near Hogsmeade. That could have been anything. You know what it was, Natsai. I am allowed to leave the castle. I am always careful, Mother. Careful. Officer Singer disagrees. She sent me an owl telling me that you have been trying to collect evidence of some kind against dark wizards. She berated me for not keeping a closer eye on you. And she is right. I do not want you visiting Hogsmeade for the near future. But mother! My little gazelle, you are well-intentioned, but you must not meddle in the affairs of dangerous people. If someone had meddled in Matabilaland, father would still be with us. I must get to class. Perhaps your friend can get you to listen to reason. So frustrating. She never listens to me. She called you her little gazelle. Is that a term of endearment where you're from? It is specific to me. <sighs> I am the unusual creature in Hogsmeade, she mentioned. Self-transfiguration is not taught at Hogwarts, so I am gently discouraged from practicing it. However, I am an Animagus, and it is in my gazelle form that I have been able to wander the Highlands rather freely until now, much to my mother's chagrin. That is how I managed to spy on Rookwood and Harlow. Ah, how did you become an Animagus? Were you born an Animagus, or did you learn to become one? Animagi are not born. The process is quite elaborate. It involves holding a mandrake leaf in one's mouth for an entire month. 
then placing the leaf in a crystal file so that it is imbued with moonlight, then adding one of your own hairs. And that is just the beginning. Self-transfiguration is common among students at Wagadu, but Professor Weasley considers it much too dangerous to teach at Hogwarts. All right. Do you choose your Animagus form? Can you choose what form your Animagus will take? Oh, no. A person's Animagus form is determined by their personality. My mother is convinced that my form is a gazelle because I adapt well to any situation. I believe it is because I can sense danger and keep my wits about me. What does it feel like? How does it feel to transform into an animal? Well, the first time, it can be a bit unnerving. I felt a kind of searing pain and a strong double heartbeat. But it gets easier the more you do it. I no longer feel any pain, and I must say, I find a sense of comfort in the double heartbeat. And I love being able to view the world from a different perspective. Okay, that's incredible. Now the nickname makes sense. What an extraordinary ability to have. It is. I love transforming, but Mother is less enthusiastic about it. She says that no creature, especially one as rare as a gazelle, should be bounding about where poaching has become so prevalent. <sighs> she claims that she has foreseen tragedy befall me in my gazelle form. But she has used her sight to control me too many times. I no longer believe it. Oh, gosh. Fuck it. She's concerned for your safety. It may be best for you to stay away from Hogsmeade for now. That may be safe, but I do not believe that it would be best. Do you? You could have fled the moment you discovered that Rookwood, Harlow, and Randrock were after you, but you did not. I choose to act as you have. I must deal with Rookwood and Harlow, not hide from them. <sighs> My mother cannot know where I am all the time. Okay. Thank you for being here during that rather awkward conversation. Thank you. <sighs> Okay, let's do the debrief now. Where to? Talk to Poppy. Someone's been paying attention in my Oh! I saw an astronomy table. Where is it? Where is it? Rebellion. There it is, right there. An astronomy table. Should prove useful once the sun's down. Fuck! Here's one of those tables. If there's any chance that the relic from Slytherin's spellbook can help her, I must find it. I'm requesting your help. Meet me outside of Feldcroft, near the catacomb. Okay. 
Revelio. Uh, how do I? Oh, there we go. Use. There we go. The Phoenix! Alright. All right, we're here. Oh, hello. Let me eat something first. Mmm, cupcake. Over here. Sup, Poppy? This is a change of pace from our last outing. Don't remind me. The thought of that tent still makes my blood boil. I've been thinking about those poor dragons in the fighting ring. The collars they were wearing, they appeared to be goblin silver. I think a collar is precisely what we found at that poacher camp. I've never known poachers to use anything like that before. The dragon that attacked my carriage was wearing a collar, and Professor Fig was genuinely baffled by its behavior. That attack always did strike me as a little strange, seemingly coming out of nowhere. Surely you aren't suggesting that the collars somehow control the poor creatures? Exactly. Merlin, I don't think the dragon we set free was wearing a collar, but we should check. And if we can find her, we can return her egg. We could check on her. That's a good idea. We need to see this through. I'll start looking into it right away. There was something else that I wanted to discuss with you. I didn't want to press it before. It seems I may have caused you more trouble with Victor Rookwood. Why is he after you? It's to do with Ranrock. Rookwood is working with Ranrock, and Ranrock is after something I found at Gringotts. Fig had a portkey that led us there after the dragon attack. It's a bit of a long story, and Fig had asked that I not speak of it yet. Goodness. Well, that certainly helps to shed light on what we saw at the tent. Don't worry, I'll guard your secret as if it were my own. I shan't press for more details. In fact, I should probably be going. I'd like to track that dragon down as soon as I can. All right. I'll let you know when I have news of her location. Thank you. Revelio. Ooh. Damn, you guys up there. All right, open this door. Hello, Hamora. Got it. Hey. I'm now, Demi guys. Hey, I got the Demi guys, Moon. Rebellion. Three broomsticks, private room. The three broomsticks, private room is a secluded space. Off the main room of the pub. Hogwarts professors ap appreciate having a separate area in which to gather to avoid encountering students. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the students appreciate their professors having a separate era area as well. Okay. Nothing in there. Oh, I got my collection updated. And I got it updated again. I got a Neasel statue. Revelio. Something 
something over there. What's over there? Kitty there too. Water well. The savvy traveler knows that some water wells may have more to offer than this relatively innocuous water well in the village of Hogsmeade. Okay. I wonder why. What? That's a level three lock, boy. Rebellion. Oh, there's a openable door. Alohomora. Hello. Anything or anyone home? Rebellion. Well, there's a demigod's moon up here. Take that. My gear slots are still full. All right. Wow. How many demigod's moons do I have? Let me check. So for the quest, you need to deliver how many moons? To you need thirteen, and how many do I have? I have eight. All right, so we're at Hogsmeade right now. There are there are more demigod statues here. I wonder where. Rebellion. I really want to search. You know, see where they are. Nope. Nope. New instruments are expensive. New instruments are indeed expensive, I know that. Uh, man, these are level 3 locks up the butt, man. Revelio. Oh, I heard you say that, Serona. Shut up. Rebellion. Damn it. Where are those fucking demi guys? Hey, I got some money. Ah, oh, hello. Magical mail. These shoots in the post office magically sort various bits of mail. The post office itself hosts houses, excuse me, over 200 owls color-coded based on how quickly a particular letter of parcel needs to be delivered. Revelio. Oh, can I have some tea? Mmm, thank you. Take some of that money. And, oh, hello. Tea shop decor. Reflective of propri proprietor Mrs. Steepley's taste, this tea shop is awash in the color of pink and frills. A cherry tinkly bell chimes whenever a customer enters. Where is the bell? There's no bell there, though. 
Don't mind if I head upstairs, ma'am? Thank you. Revelio. All right. You don't got nothing much else here, so I will just take my leave now, ma'am. Thank you very much for your hospitality. Fuck. Hey, level two lock. Alohomora. of our Hebridean dragon friend and where to return her you know what. Meet me in the town circle in Hogsmeade. Never knew butterflies were attracted to treasure. I must have missed that one in beasts. Ah. Alohomora. You don't turn quick. If you're stuck with a Dory Core feather, it doesn't half hurt. Hello. Air. Hello, Hamora. There could be a demiguy's moon somewhere else. I don't know. I'm just exploring the place. Ya. Now we have nine. We need four more now. Oh, nothing there. Oh well. Revelio. Oh, what the fuck is this? Make some money. <laughs> All right, where eels? Yeah, I don't know where the other stuff is. <sighs> Hello, Hamora. Could be another moon in there. Hello, anybody in here? Nothing in there, yeah. Anything up here? Oh, there's a sack up here. There's some money. Rebellion. All right, nothing in there. What if I'm just going around Hogsmeade, practically burglarizing all the homes here. Already been in there. 
All right, let's. All right, let's stop. Let's do a little questing. Up oh, shit. All right, so let's see. Let's talk with a mint. Gobbledygook. Oh, beating a curse. Huh. Let's do that instead. Handy resource indeed, your field guide. I'm most pleased to be included. All right. Wait. Hello. Oh, it's you. Just the person I need. Samantha, is everything all right? No, no, it's not. It's my brother William. The one I told you about after charms class. He's... he's been cursed. He ignored my warning and now he's lying in St. Mungo's looking completely pathetic. He simply never listens. I'm sorry, how exactly has he been cursed? Oh, you won't believe it. Truly, but his feet were turned into purple beets. You can imagine his distress. And mine. I won't even go into the attention he was getting from our garden rabbits before he admitted himself to hospital. That's awful. I'm so sorry. That sounds like a trying situation. I'm glad you understand. Everyone else just laughs at me as if it's a joke. No compassion at all. Well, it is an unusual situation. How did your brother end up like this? It's entirely his own fault. I told him about some research I'd done recently on our ancestor Marmaduke Dale. In particular, my discovery that Marmaduke's tomb was cursed. My brother's always making fun of my discoveries. This time, he laughed in my face. Told me I'd misinterpreted my findings. As if that weren't possible. And to prove his point, he went right up to the entrance of the tomb, and poof! His feet transfigured into beets. He clearly needs help. How awful. I can see why you're upset. He definitely needs some help. Exactly. He may be a cape flapper, but he's still my brother. And no one deserves such a fate to last forever. Especially as the result of a single brainless mistake. Now I worry that if the curse isn't reversed, it could become permanent. Can't the curse be broken? Possibly. The curse stems from a crest that was stolen from Marmaduke. If the crest were returned to its rightful place upon his sarcophagus, then I believe that William's feet may be restored. You battled trolls when they attacked Hogsmeade, escaped a dragon, and I could tell by your work and charms that you're a skilled spellcaster. Turning a crest to a sarcophagus should be almost effortless for you. So, will you help us? Alright, where did the curse come from? Why was Mom Duke's tomb cursed? The curse is the result of an intense sibling rivalry between Granum Dale and his younger brother Marmaduke. Marmaduke was a famed herbologist, and Granum resented the attention that he received. Sibling rivalry? Sounds as if it might run in the family. But I would never intentionally curse my brother. Not like Granum did. When their mother died, Marmaduke was given the prized family crest. Granum felt that as the eldest child, he should have been given it. Years later, when Marmaduke died, Granum stole it and cursed the tomb so that none in the Dale family could ever pay their respects. Alright, if I help, will my feet become beets? How do you know it's safe? I don't want my feet to turn into beets as well. Oh, but the curse only applies to Marmaduke's descendants as my brother so aptly demonstrated. That's why I need your help. You're unrelated to my family, so the curse wouldn't affect you. All right, why was Marmaduke famous? Why is your ancestor so well known? He discovered the properties of several magical herbs and plants. He also uncovered numerous types of flora. The wizarding world owes him a great debt. His work not only impacted the discipline of herbology, but also potion making. Okay, of course I'll help you. I can take the crest to Marmaduke's sarcophagus for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You'll simply go into the tomb where Marmaduke was laid to rest and place the crest on top of his sarcophagus. 
According to my research, the tomb's been abandoned for centuries, so it should be a fairly simple task. You'll find it just east of the hamlet of Brockborough. Thank you for your help. My family right. is indebted to you. Crest of Marmaduke Gilbertus Dale. Let's do it. Where are we going? Oh, shit. Brockborough. We're gonna go Brock to Brockborough. Let's do it. I need to find the tomb near Brockborough and place Samantha's family crest on a sarcophagus there. Wait, well, wrong way. My bad. If I wanted this little excitement, I'd have a job at a bank. Let's see what's up your sleeve this time, Merlin. Mala sweet. won't get the best of me. Family tomb. What the fuck? There's a fucking bee that just. Oh man, these bees. Oh, the bees. Oh, the bees. Enter the Dale family tomb. Well, my feet didn't turn into beets. That's a good start. Revelio. Revelio. Should have known a herbologist would use Devil's Snare. Yeah. 
Got it. Hey, I got a new painting. And some money. Oh, what the hell? What the hell do you get up there? Revelio. Ah, Devil's Snare. Lumos. Whoa! A troll? You can't be serious. The Riparian Troll. Maybe if I can use Petrificus Totalis on his ass. I don't know. 
flip a troll's glove onto his, his face. Propendo. Descendo. Bombarda. Protector. And you're done. Hey, I got troll bogeys. And this is his club. Oh, the club's gonna disappear. No! Okay, that was the Riparian Troll. He was a... quite a troll. Ha ha, ha ha. But he couldn't troll out of me out. Uh-oh. That sarcophagus appears to be open. A sarcophagus? This must be Marmaduke. That should reverse the curse. Hopefully. Alright. Kidney leaves. Aw, oh, fuck you. Alright. Alright, we need to get the fuck out of here. Oh, well, can't go out that way. Which way can I go out then? This way? There we go. What's over here? Well, Marmaduke certainly left behind more than plants. Nope. Some money? More money? Out there. Gotta find a way out. Be glad to hear that the crest has been returned. I certainly hope it reverses the curse. Christine's. All right, let's go. Oh. So there's some type of puzzle in this room. Gotta figure it out one day. Uh, over here. Oh. Oh no! I'm trapped! Samantha. Here. I'm happy to tell you that I returned the crest to Marmaduke's sarcophagus just as you asked. I thought as much. I received word from St. Mungo's that my brother's feet are back to normal. No more beats. Oh, I cannot thank you enough. 
It wasn't too much trouble, I hope. <laughs> well, nothing I couldn't handle. Just a measly old troll. Nothing significant. A troll? Oh dear, I'm so sorry. That's awful. No one has been in that tomb for centuries. But I can't say I'm surprised. Marmaduke seems to have been full of surprises. Indeed he was. Well, I suppose I should be going. I'm anxious to see my brother, who must be elated to have his feet back. Of course. I certainly would be. William and I are forever in your debt. Thank you again for what you did. Sometimes I wish I knew. Hey! Beating a curse. That was a lot deeper than I thought it would be. All right, everyone. Well, uh, we'll end it right now with a nice shot of this tree. All right, all right, everyone. Uh, thank you all for watching this episode, and uh, yeah, I will now yield the floor. Bye. <laughs>